Okay, so now we know gradient is an increasing direction. Given this, what we will do is to move along its opposite direction for minimization problem, right? Uh, so that's why this method is called gradient descent. Its general strategy is that, okay, I want to minimize the function. Then at a given point, at a given point, I want to know where I should move. Maybe I should move along this direction, for example. If that's the case, that's we want to first find the gradient so that its opposite direction is guaranteed to give us some minimization effect. As long as as long as we move for a small enough step size. Okay? So given a current solution X, we want to do one iteration and update ourselves to the opposite direction of our gradient. Okay, so this is the opposite direction of our gradient at the particular value x. So we want to do that for some value a, which is positive. So a is called the step size. We would stop, we would stop when the gradient of a current solution is zero. If that's the case, then obviously your gradient descent will give you no more improvement. We'll just stop at x, then we can stop. So now the question is, how may we choose an appropriate value of a? So the thing is that your a should somehow be small, so that you really guarantee to have some improvement. Okay? If you move for too far a distance, maybe you would get some kind of um, non-improvement, okay? So let's take a look again as a one-dimensional example, something like this, okay? So suppose that you are here, okay, you are here, and you are asking yourself how to improve yourself. So your gradient would move to the, would point to the right, and you would say, oh, okay, then I'm going to move to the left to do minimization. So when your a is small enough, that's good. But if you move too far up to here, okay, if you choose your step size to be a too large value, then maybe eventually you get even higher. All right? So your a needs some uh, consideration. And of course, you don't want to choose a very small step size because that's going to make the speed of your algorithm very mm, slow. So Maybe we want more discussions, and let's see an example first. So again, let's try to solve our favorite function, x1 squared plus x2 squared. Suppose we start at x0, which is 1, 1. So 1, 1 is here, okay? And for this particular function, we all know what's an optimal solution. There's no way for you to do better than 0, 0. Right, because the function itself has a natural lower bound, zero. So zero, zero is optimal. So the optimal point is here. On the graph, I depicted two circles. So they are some kind of isoquant line. I hope you all agree that this x1 square, x2 square is some kind of parabola on your um, three-dimensional space. And the minimum point is here, zero, zero. So along this circle, all the points on the circle gets the same objective value. Again, all the points for the next circle gives you the same objective value. So when you look at these circles, they form some kind of contour for your particular problem. Okay, so this is a contour map. You may say that. Okay. So what we want to say here is that suppose we start at 1, 1. Then let's try to find the gradient. So the gradient is that we want to differentiate with, with respect to x1. So that's how we get this. With respect to x2, we get this. That's this one. Okay. And then the gradient at x0 may be plugged in. You get 2, 2. 2, 2 is in this direction. All right. So we will move in the opposite direction. So let's try to take a look. In that case, if we choose a to be one half, we're going to move from x0 to x1, which is 0, 0. 
this would be optimal. Okay, so if we move in this way and choose the right um, step size, then we would get to an optimal solution. But on the contrary, if we set A to be one, then what we will do is that we will move from one one to one one minus two two, which is negative one negative one. Okay, we will move to here. Okay, so the gradient would be pretty much the opposite direction, and then we will do that, and we will do it again and go back to one one. Okay, if your step size is fixed and it's always one, then in that case, in this particular example, you will move back and forth from x zero, x one, x zero, and x one. And so on and so on. Your algorithm will not converge in that particular way. So this somehow, uh, I hope this somehow convinces you that choosing a step size is very important. If you choose a bad step size, it actually can be very bad. Your algorithm may move in the right right direction, but with a bad step size, it even may uh, fail to converge. Okay. So that would be very、uh, critical, and we really need some way to deal with that. So, how to choose a step size? There are many different ways to choose a step size, and many scholars are doing research on that. One general idea is that if you want to predefine your step size, then your step size should be as、uh, to be decreasing, to make sure that you somehow get some converged result. So here we want to introduce a another strategy. We may instead look for the largest improvement. What does that mean? We're going to ask along our improving direction, which is the negative uh, redu- uh negative gradient. We're going to look for an a which is a step size that can minimize the outcome. Okay. So that means we want to see. For how far we should go to reach the lowest point among this direction? Okay, we are we know we are here. We also know that we want to move along this direction, and if that's the case, we want to ask for how long we may get an optimal the minimum point. Then we move there. Okay, so that's another strategy that many people try to use. So we now make. Describe our gradient descent algorithm. So don't forget, this is just one way to implement the gradient descent algorithm. At least you have other ways to choose step size, but here we just want to introduce you this one. So your step zero is to choose the starting point. Let's call it zero x x zero, and don't forget x zero is a vector, okay? And a precision parameter epsilon. Later we will use it. And then for each step, k plus one, we will try to find your、uh, gradient x k. So this means we are starting at, for example, x zero. Then at x zero, we will try to find its gradient, and then we will try to move along the negative direction. So here we need to find a k, which is our step size. Which is the value that may minimize this particular thing? Along that direction, we want to find the best we may do and move to that direction. We move to that point. So we will update our current solution from x k to x k plus one by moving this particular、um, step size a k. Okay. So then we will reach the lowest point that we may reach along our improving direction. Then we ask whether we are reaching a stopping condition. Pretty much the most popular stopping condition is that for our new gradient, for our new gradient f of x at x k plus one, we want to take a look at its norm, which is calculated in this way. Okay, so again, it's from your calculus textbook. We take each element of that vector. We do the sum of the squares and then take square roots. So that's the the most popular way to define a norm or the significance of a vector. 
So if that particular thing is quite small, it's smaller than epsilon. What does that mean? That means all the elements of your gradient is small. So if that's the case, that somehow means well, the improvement that you may get by doing the next iteration would be too small. And if that's the case, pretty much you stop. Somehow, if your epsilon is small enough, like 10 to the power of negative 6, 10 to the power of negative 8, then this is pretty much saying that your gradient is 0. It's approximately 0. If that's the case, then please stop and report your solution xk plus 1. Otherwise, that's k to be k plus 1 and then continue. Okay? So this is an iterative process. At a point, look for the gradient. Move along the negative gradient. Find the best we may do along that direction. Move there. And then ask yourself whether you should keep going by asking whether your gradient is close to zero enough. So that's the idea. Later, let's see some examples.